You're listening to PTC Point of View, brought to you by Preferred Trust Company, the preferred custodian for all alternative investments. We're here to provide retirement savers like you with the tools you need to succeed. Need a confidence boost when it comes to investing outside of the stock market? Do you want the power to build a tax-sheltered nest egg that will last through your golden years? You've come to the right place. Turn up your speakers and turn off cruise control because we're taking you on the alternate route to investing with your IRA. So welcome. We have Rob Anderson from BB Capital with us today to talk all things real estate investing. So let's talk about, let's just get right into it. You sure, are? absolutely. All right, so who is BB Capital? BB Capital is an investment company. We're, we're, we're a real estate company. We're, let me step back. We're real estate investors in control of the deal. Nice. Right, and okay. we're letting, we're, we're giving all, uh, opportunities for others to invest with us or alongside of us in what we're doing. I like that. So you're investing in your own product. Oh, absolutely. All right. What's your product? Anything that makes really good money is real estate related. Uh -huh. I, I jokingly say that because we're opportunistic. You know, a lot of folks will just, they'll pick a lane and that's their lane. Well, what happens when that lane goes out of favor? Yeah. Pretty much they shut the doors or they lay off. We never wanted to be in that position. Um, what we will do is we'll stay to one geography. We're, we're pretty much just Texas only, right? Okay. But we're not afraid to go into different property types or different markets inside our focus, which is the state of Texas, if we need to. A good example of what we were just talking about a second ago, value add multifamily is getting harder and harder to pencil. The, the, the returns are getting lower and lower and lower, yeah. but construction still makes a lot of money. Yeah. And there's a lot of supply and demand issues that still work there. In fact, the price of lumber has already dropped down to pre-COVID numbers. Have you seen this? Yes, I'm oh. building a house. Of course I've seen oh, this. Exactly. I'm yeah. so excited. Yeah, so it's a big deal. So uh, very opportunistic. Where, from an economic standpoint, even a macro, does it make sense to do what? And where? where's the best risk return? And that's where we want to play. All right, give me your last deal you closed. Break that deal apart for me just a little bit. What does it look like from an investor's perspective? I mean, like a round trip? Yeah. Okay. The one I like to tell you about actually was down in Houston, and here's why. It's not a perfect deal, okay? Because there's no perfect deal. You're right. Okay? Risk and everything. So this was ground up multifamily. Now, we do a lot more multifamily. You know, sure. we have a big industrial plan we talked about. Um, 330 doors from the ground up. We raised $6 million from investors. We had a $30 million loan. Three years later, fully built, beautiful pool, uh, beautiful property. It's uh, just south of the Woodlands, if you've ever heard of that. It's a big economic area. And uh, we're ready to sell it. Well, this little thing happened. You might have heard of it. It's called Hurricane Harvey. Yes. Yeah, it, it kind of put the brakes on things, right? And so we couldn't sell. We're not going to sell just because an alarm went off, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, we sat on it for another, I want to say it was 12, 13 months. The market stabilizes, yeah. stabilizes. It always does. It's yes, the big it question is when, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I always tell people, there's two things you need to know. It's illiquid and I can't control the clock. Yep. Right? Outside of that, let me explain the deal to you. So, you know, it's about 12, 13 months later, we finally exited and sold it to a California investor for over $48 million. So cash on cash basis, investors still doubled their money. Mm -hmm. It took a year longer than we wanted it to. Yeah, but they still doubled their money. And it was only four years. Patience is the key in real estate. Would you agree? Absolutely. Because you are going to, it won't be the first Harvey. It won't be the last. Right. Um, obviously, yeah. right? You just you just have to know how to weather the storm. No pun intended. I'm, I'm not trying to, you know, uh, place havoc on what happened there. But um, sometimes you do. You have to, you have to hold and you have to wait um, before you can receive those returns. So would that be, um, give, give me your pinnacle investment that BB Capital has ever made. So our home run deal, it's funny, that was in Houston too. And we haven't done a ton down there, but for some reason I have two examples from down there. We took a property that was condemned and convinced the city to make it worthwhile to do. Took it to its stud. This is pre-Chip and Joe, by the way. Okay. Okay, this is about a 200-unit condemned multifamily. Took it to the studs, completely renovated it, turned it into a Class A property, 
Everybody passed on this. Everybody passed on this. Four X in two and a half years mm -hmm. for investors. So why? People just go, how? Why? And I can't promise you I'll ever see that again. Yeah. And we probably may not actually see that ever mm -hmm. again. Well, number one, it's coming right out of the recession. Okay. Right. So this was 09 to actually this was 2010 to 2012. Mm -hmm. And so timing was great. Yep. Distress value. What, what people didn't realize there's million to two million dollar homes within a half mile to a mile radius of this property. This property was the single worst eyesore in a three mile radius. Yep. Nobody was willing to put in the sweat equity and the work to do it. But you did. Mm -hmm. And it paid off. It did. The reason why I'm asking you questions about the good, the bad, and the ugly is I'm trying to figure out exactly what BB Capital's strengths are. And pivoting. Yeah, it, 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 it is a, it's pivoting. I'll tell you this, the, the worst one we did was uh, a portfolio property and we had to part ways with a partner, a former partner over this in that we had third-party property management. And this was multifamily too. I know okay. that's all we do, but these are just my examples. Yeah. And um, the third-party property manager is not financially aligned with the property owner. Mm -hmm. If you look at how they get paid. Yes. And it's a flaw, and but every but they're big, and everybody uses them. Mm -hmm. And and we actually had to sue them for breach of contract, and got a mid six digit settlement. And so what did we do? We went and created our own property management company that we could control. It is aligned with our investors' interests, mm -hmm. right? So people always say, well, "What's your specialty?" There's a lot of things. Right? Yeah, we're people just like everybody else, yeah. but we are willing to pivot. Mm -hmm. Like value add is tough. Construction works. Mm -hmm. You know, there were times when multifamily wasn't the right thing to do. We got into industrial. Mm -hmm. uh, we were big into office. We had to take a break on office. Right. Yeah. It just depends on, on what the environment is and what's where to be. Where should you be? So tell me about all your in-house services. What do you guys provide? Do you do your own capital fundraising? Do you sound like you have a construction company? You have a property management company. Like, kind of run me through what the gamut of services that you guys provide in house. Sure, we do full development inside in house, right? So uh, we have our own capital. We raise our own capital through investors. We love IRA investors. We have um, uh, a construction company, and this is important because they are civil engineering degree people. And so when you get the civil engineering plans back. Do you really know what you're looking at? Can you call them to the carpet on it? Right, that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, the person who runs that is also a, a, an attorney. So when it comes down to the contracts, there's a lot of contracts, and, and how do you structure that helps a lot. So we have that in house, um, and then we have property management houses I mentioned earlier. Yeah. So the full development side of it, the construction side, the capital side, and the property management side is in house. If we go into an asset class or a property type that uh, maybe we feel like we don't have the full expertise and we'll partner. Okay. So like on the industrial side, we have a partner and we think they're some of the best that we've found. Okay. Uh, and, and that's what that's how we'll do that. Okay. Talk to me about, uh, describe a typical investor. What does your typical investor look like? You know, what's fascinating to me is I would say my corporate executives are still in love with the stock market. Mm -hmm. Not fully, not yeah. fully at all, yeah. because I was corporate executive and I got, mm -hmm. I quit and went into real estate for that, right? Yeah. Um, but if I was to stereotype them, you know, uh, they'll dabble in real estate. Mm -hmm. um, however, my entrepreneurs are about the polar opposite. Yes. My entrepreneurs love real estate. They love deals. They don't trust the stock market. I find it fascinating. Mm -hmm. It's like a personality type. Mm -hmm. And so the majority of our folks, um, well, I mean, we have everybody, mm -hmm. right? But boy, those entrepreneurs are, are, are just <laughs> loving this stuff. They are. They can read a deal. They can understand it. They can look at the financials. They've run a business where they've sold a the business. They understand that side of it. It makes more sense to them. What does your education look like? What kind of information do you provide your investors before they invest in a project? Well, I've actually told people they can't invest yet. So I'm that weird guy. So you don't understand. You've got to understand. Or I don't feel comfortable taking your money. This is going to sound a little arrogant, but I don't need your money. Yeah, I want it, but yeah. I don't need it. That's mm -hmm. a big difference. Mm -hmm. There's people out there that need it. Yeah. And so you've got to be careful to see who you're dealing with, right? Okay. I always tell people, you have to understand the risks. And they'll say, I'm ready to go. I'm like, you're not ready to go. Why am I not ready to go? You never asked me what the risks were. <laughs> you have to understand this. 
And, you know, I think the risks are A, B, and C. Mm -hmm. And then are those risks, what's the likelihood of that? And is it worth the return, i.e. risk return? So number one, what are the risks? And do you fully understand those? Are you comfortable with them? The answer is no, this isn't the right deal for you. Yeah. Let me understand. Let's talk further. We'll find a deal that is right for you. This one may not be it. But secondly, what's the exit? How do you get out of this? This is 100% illiquid. I joke with people all the time. If you give me some money, you call me a month later because something happened. I can't give it to you. I bought a building with it, mm -hmm. right? And I'm not going to sell a, a brick, a brick, <laughs> you got a couple of bricks to give me your money. It's not, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. So you've got to understand that. Mm -hmm. And especially if they've not done this before, the, the lack of liquidity is the first hurdle. Mm -hmm. God, that's, it's, it's a mental thing. You've got to yes. understand that. Yes. That may also be some of the difference. What's the typical hold period? Three to five years. Three five years. Yeah, sometimes shorter. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll do some bridge stuff that might be one to two years, but most of the most of the funds or the projects are three to five years. Okay. So illiquid nature, what's the, give me the second risk? I think you're running down risk factors. Well, the, no, the other thing I was going to say is, how, what's the exit? Yes, the exit. How do you get your money back? back? How mm -hmm. does this sponsor, which is what we're called, but mm -hmm. how does this real estate developer in this particular situation return your money? Mm -hmm. And how do they promote, how do they create that return? Mm -hmm. And is that a viable way of doing it? In other words, if the way you're going to get your money back is through a refinance, that's not technically an exit. Mm -hmm. You know, is there an institution willing to pay the price tag for what they are creating? Mm -hmm. Right. And, mm -hmm. and have they done it before? What's the market for it? And, you know, is this something they truly want? So one thing I, I, I share with people, so our, our, our industrial fund is what we're doing is we're putting properties together in a portfolio because institutions love industrial and they love triple net, but they do not want to buy one at a time. Nope. But yep. they love them a good portfolio. Oh, yeah. Right? And so that's what I mean. Like, is the exit sound? Mm -hmm. Does it make business sense? Mm -hmm. And so people understand the risks, understand the exit. And then obviously the only other thing you can really do besides understanding the deal is, is evaluating your sponsor and their track record. Yeah. Uh, all of your investors accredited investors? Yes. All accredited investors. Okay. All right. And where do your investors come from? We're in almost 50 states. Really? Almost 50 states. A few, a few out of the country. Okay. Um, not sure we want to keep doing that, but uh, <laughs> we, we've had a few, yeah. you know, the taxes are kind of on now, but yep. uh, pretty much everywhere. Yeah. It's everywhere. Now, we're in a nice spot in that uh, uh, people that call Texas the California from the 70s. Mm. That may be a little grand. I hope it's not. But since that's where we are, because of the mass massive in-migration the state has seen yes. and the lack of building. So, yeah. so this is what you might find this interesting. Back to 08, that was truly a real estate bubble. People go, is this a real estate bubble? I say, no, it's not a bubble. It's cold. It's a yeah. totally different thing. Back in 08, there was this massive overbuilding. We've had a massive underbuilding this time around. Yes. Now, we've got this inflation thing, which is really sure. annoying. We didn't have sure. then. But from a pure supply and demand demographic, so for every, uh, uh, I want to say for every thousand people that move to an area, you need 1.2 million in uh, warehouse space built, mm -hmm. stuff like that, yeah. right? You need housing, mm -hmm. you need retail, you need yeah. grocery, you need all the stuff that goes yeah. with it, right? And so when you have that massive in-migration without the buildup coming to it, it does a wonder for property values. Sure does. How do they invest with you? Do they invest with their businesses, their qualified funds, cash? Like, what do you what do you typically see from a from a you know, investor? Well, well, so you can avoid you can invest directly, mm -hmm. joint LLC trust. We see a lot of that. We see a lot in the qualified space area, mm -hmm. right? Whether it's a SEP, mm -hmm. IRA, Roth, mm -hmm. uh, handful of four hundred one k pension stuff, but. Uh, I'd say the most common would be trust, LLC, direct, or the IRA. Mm -hmm. You know, and and so the the IRA is access to capital, mm -hmm. and, and so you know people look at real estate as a diversification. Mm -hmm. Now, my compliance officer would kill me if I didn't say one's liquid, one's illiquid. Get mm -hmm. that, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, once you get that, the beauty of real estate is it's uncorrelated to the equity markets, mm -hmm. and so that is something, especially today, that people are interested in. Yeah. Absolutely. In their cash or after tax, as well as the pre-tax mm -hmm. qualified oh, money. Yep. From both perspectives. All right. Okay. You had just mentioned that there's a variety of different types of funds. Um, what are you currently raising capital for right now? 
Well, one thing I didn't mention is the 1031 exchange. Oh, yes. That's, yes that's, please bring that up. That's another one that's gotten really popular. Why? Because, you know, it's been 25 years since Robert Kiyosaki wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad. 25 years. I looked it up because that was one of the things that got me and a lot yes. of other people going. Yes, I, mean, I bought works. a bunch of rental houses mm -hmm. and, and uh, it works. Yeah. And I got tired of having a second job. So I sold them all and went purely <laughs> passive, which yeah. is what I'm preteen right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. Is um, and that's happening across the board because asset values and property values are so high yep. that people are saying, I really would like to take advantage mm -hmm. of this price point. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's going to last forever. Yeah. Um, did it myself. I sold a vacation home recently. Mm -hmm. And so, but then they see that tax bill. Yes. Not only that, they see the uh, uh, depreciation recapture mm -hmm. that happens because mm -hmm. you can appreciate yep. that stuff all along the way. You get to defer all of that if you exchange it. But then there's this time constraint 45 mm -hmm. days to mm -hmm. figure something out, 180 mm -hmm. days. Well, the beauty of a Delaware statutory trust is you can exchange into a bigger, more institutional property. So we've been doing that for investors. It actually started out of investor demand. Yeah. We had so many phone calls asking us for a 1031 option. So that's something that's open right now. Uh, we have our triple net industrial fund that's open right now. And we have a land play that's open right now. So we give investors the ability to finance the purchase of land that we're going to develop. And it, it capitalizes the pre-development. But then when we actually raise the development, it buys the land investors out plus an interest payment of some sort, which is usually pretty high. Yeah. Am I allowed to ask? What does the return look like? On the land? Yeah. Uh, we paid most of the time we've been paying about a 20% preferred return. So what is a preferred return? That's, that's first money off the top. Mm -hmm. People think that's current income. It's not current income. So if you invest in this, you don't get paid for a year. Yeah. But then when, but when that year's over, you get the full return of capital. And you accrue the PREF through the year. So if it took nine months, it'd be 15. Okay. It took 12 months, it'd be 20, et cetera. And there's no guarantee, obviously, yeah. but you're backed by the land is why a lot of people mm -hmm. like it. Mm -hmm. Worst case, we turn to sell the land. Yeah. Never had to do that yet. It's been a really nice financing arm, especially right now. Yeah. Uh, for us, because, you know, banks are, we've got a great reputation with the banks that we work with, mm -hmm. but there's only so much debt they'll let yeah. you have. There's only so yeah. much leverage. And if we have the land taken down free and clear, then we can contribute that and get better terms on the construction. Yeah, absolutely. They love to see that. Mm -hmm. Changes the banking relationship real quick. It does. <laughs> it does. <laughs> it opens the floodgates a little bit more. And having your own source of capital and your own construction company helps your banking relationship too, because banks are gun shy about a sponsor that can't control all of that mm -hmm. because if there's outside parties, yeah. they could pull the trigger on you and your deal just die. Yeah, you're reducing their risk. Correct the deal, 100%. You're listening to PTC Point of View, brought to you by Preferred Trust Company. So what would you say is the best IRA vehicle with BB Capital? I would say two things. The land or the, the land plays that we do are good because generally there's no debt on them. So you don't have UBIT exposure, mm -hmm. right? The other one would be our triple net industrial fund because be, for the same reason, it's going to have very, very little, if any, UBIT exposure on it. And it's a good way, if you've not done this, mm -hmm. to start investing because it's a very conservative investment. It's very, it's much further down the risk return spectrum mm -hmm. because, as you know, triple net, you're talking about good sized companies. Triple net stock, what does it mean? Okay, triple net, that term comes from, if you'll see it written, it's three capital N's. Mm -hmm. So what are you net of? You're, so in this situation, we're signing leases with companies and the companies are responsible for 100% of the taxes. They have to find, source, and pay for the insurance, manage and maintain all of the buildings. So think about if you had a rental house and your tenant was- Be a dream tenant, <laughs> could you imagine? I'd still own my rental house. Yes. Um, especially with the maintenance side of this. Mm -hmm. So that's what triple net is, or absolute net is another one where, where you are responsible for nothing but accepting the rent. Mm -hmm. Now, we still have to go make sure they pay their taxes. We still mm -hmm. make sure that sure. they have the right insurance. You're double back making sure. Um, we still and then we take the rent, and we pay the mortgage, and, and then we take uh, the income off of that and pay that to investors. And so the neat thing about that is investors can re actually receive income monthly. Nice. A lot of folks like that because a lot of real estate deals will pay at the end or mm -hmm. they might pay quarterly. Mm -hmm. It's not every day that you pay you get something paid monthly. Yeah. Mailbox money. Yeah, it's kind of the uh it's kind of the uh the bond or fixed income piece yeah. of the real estate world. It's nice. In fact, um JLL, a big real estate shop, has called this a bond wrapped in real estate. 
Oh, I kind of like cool that. Tack. I stole it. I, I gave like credit. That. But it's a neat way because it's you can compare a triple net lease contract to a bond if you look at the paperwork. Both are an obligation to pay. One is on the credit of the company. The other has a building attached to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'd argue it's a better position to be in. Yeah. And what people don't realize is the uh, the cost or the line item mm -hmm. of the rent to these companies' full balance sheet is so minute. I mean, it, it's not yeah. really. I mean, they're, they're going to cut a million things sure. before they cut that. That's right. So it's the last thing on the list. And these contracts are long. They're ten mm -hmm. to fifteen years. Mm -hmm. And they have what we call rent bonds. Now it's not. No, we we can't plan for eight percent inflation. Sure. But they'll have one, two, three percent bumps every year, so mm -hmm. their rents are going up mm -hmm. while we're paying down the mortgage. Yeah, that's awesome. Great vehicle. This type of of investment. When did this become available to the general public? Because you're talking about things that 10 years ago, I mean, there was no discussion on the streets about this. Right. So at what point did this become open concept to investors? When do you think that happened? Where was that paradigm? I would say it was in the 15, 16, 17, 20, 20 2016 yeah. time frame. You know, 2012 is the Jobs Act, mm -hmm. and that kind of opened things up a little bit. 2013, the SEC came out and gave us regulations on it, mm -hmm. and and then people had to figure out what to do with it. Yeah, and and ironically, it's the exact same uh, legislation that also created crowdfunding. Mm -hmm. so everybody knew about that, but then this really opened up a different subset of investing to, and I can't say the general public, but the accredited investor. True. Which is a much bigger group mm -hmm. that people think about because mm -hmm. they've never indexed it up. Yeah. Yeah. So in the past, you had to have a substantial relationship. So you had to know the right people, mm -hmm. which meant you probably had to be in the right, mm -hmm. air quotes, right zip yes. code. And so it was very, you could even argue it was discriminatory to a certain degree, right? It was incredibly hard to find access to these type of opportunities. That has changed dramatically for the better. Yes. And it's one thing that I'm actually passionate about. If they got, I was lucky enough to have a friend that did this. And so I, I got into this a long time ago. I got into this in 09. Mm -hmm. Most people did not have that friend. Yes. Right. And back then you had to have that friend in order to have access. And that's one thing I'm, I'm, we are really excited about is being able to bring that access to people that may not have had it otherwise. Yeah, I agree. And, and, you know, there's a transition that has happened with that as well. We talk about, you know, when I say general public, when we talk about accredited investors, you know, August 2020, they redefined what an accredited investor meant. Has that had an impact on how you guys evaluate accredited investor under the sophistication rules? Have you guys seen a, a change there? Because, you Not know, accredited investor and, you know, regulation products were, you know, you go one or two ways. It was the crowdfunding model where you click the button that you say you're a credit investor and you invest $500. Okay, let's be honest. Mm -hmm. What a credit investor is going to go out and invest $500? Right. So I think, you know, they had to clean that up too, just like they did, you know, when, when they were defining what these rules meant to us. When in August 2020, they're like, okay, we're going to expand the definition of a credit investor uh, to be those that have certifications, to be those that are professionals in the industry, to be those that, um, you know, are certified public accountants or RIAs or all of a sudden this accredited investor definition opened up. Did that change uh, for you guys or do you stick with the standard rules of the well, 250 300 or million dollars? Do you guys stick with that or how does that work? It's interesting that you bring that up because they'll come out and do that, mm -hmm. but yet they regulate it differently mm -hmm. or even worse, litigate it differently. Yes. And so compliance officers who we employ as well mm -hmm. aren't going to necessarily go by the newest bulletin that came out. Yes. They're going to go by how are they treating you in an audit? Yes. And now we're getting into the weeds and I apologize That's for that. Okay. But the answer is it hasn't changed much yet. Okay. With the exception of maybe the uh, Series 7 financial advisor or the RIA, yeah. uh, because that is their job mm -hmm. to know investments. Mm -hmm. That's been the only one that's really been kind of easier. Yeah. They're, you know, I, I, it'd be nicer if it was a little bit broader, mm -hmm. but until they regulate, until they enforce it, yes. 
differently. Yes. We really can't go until back. we see some lawsuits on it and figure out what the overarching um, <laughs> defined rule, I guess, right. is how that's going to be defined. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so limited. We're definitely looking for accredited investors for BB Capital. We are. Um, it sounds like you do have many options, though, from passive investments on a monthly basis to an annual payout, uh, different product type. All of it, though, housed in Texas. Is that correct? That is correct. Perfect. Well, occasionally. Oh, here we go. Occasionally we go off the reservation, but not that often. Okay, not that often. All right, that's fair enough. Fair enough. There's a lot, a lot of people out there that are looking for good quality investments. And what's maybe even more important is making sure they're working with an investment sponsor that stays in their lane. And the fact that you're staying in your lane in a place that you know very well, you have connections with, et cetera, um, you're just mitigating risk. Yeah. I mean, that's that's a, a good way of looking at it from an investor's you know, perspective. That was actually one reason we bought the broker dealer that we have. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do that, but it held, it holds us to a higher fiduciary standard. You yeah. know, I actually I, I have I don't have just SEC oversight; I have FINRA oversight. Mm -hmm. We go out our, out of our way to share with people. Why am I asking you all these annoying questions when the last sponsor didn't? Yes, I get that question a lot. Yes, and my investor relations team definitely gets that a lot. Yeah. There's reasons for that. Mm -hmm. And it's not only there uh, for regulation reason, it's there to protect the investor. Yeah. And we need them to understand the things that we talked about a second mm -hmm. ago. So we do take it a little bit further than most. Well, I got to give you some kudos on that because I have taken the opportunity to look through your private place memorandum, at least one of them. I think you guys might send me another one. And uh, if you have the opportunity, whoever's listening, uh, reach out to them, your accredited investor. And it's it's one of the best private placement randoms I've ever seen because you can understand it. You break it down in a way where if you've never invested in real estate before and you're looking to tip your toe in the water, right? All those, you know, uh, I'm going to play the market people out there. If you're wanting to dip your toe in the market. They can help you do that. You won't even have to talk to them. <laughs> Just look at their private place memorandum and digest that and then pick up the phone, call and get more information. And I, I think it's exciting. I, I love what you guys are doing. I can't tell you how much I appreciate that because we fight with the attorneys who write that document. Oh, I'm sure you do. And obviously not to go outside the lines, but just to make it friendly to understand, to, to, to you know, digest. Yeah. It was easy for me to know exactly what you guys were doing with that fund. Um, so good job. Thank good you. job with that. Appreciate that. All right. How do investors get a hold of you? Our website's probably the best way. Okay. It's bbcapitaltx.com. Yes, we bang that t Texas brand. I'm sorry, but we do. Okay. Uh, so uh, BV Capital. BV is short for Bridgeview, uh, which is our development arm. But bvcapitaltx.com. Please reach out to us. Love to visit with you. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much for joining us today. We truly appreciate it. And uh, we hope to have you back soon. Would love to. Thank you. Thanks for joining us for another episode of PTC Point of View, where retirement savers meet alternative investments. Know someone who's struggling with a retirement strategy? Tell them about our show. Can't wait for the next episode to learn more? Visit our website at preferredtrustcompany.com or give us a call at 888-990-7892.